Hey guys, so you guys really enjoyed the last one that we done of the biggest degenerate thread and there's so much left of it so we just thought why not do a part two if you've enjoyed it that much so here we go. I've told TG of my group from my late teen years, the mid 90s before. We were all some flavour of that guy. I'll just talk about two, Ken the Furry and Joe the Giant. Joe the Giant was a dude that always played either giant Amazon women or video game characters. He also made a terrible homebrew that he had whined the DM to use until the DM allowed it. He probably had the tism because in addition to his obsessions, he rocked all the time. What? Yeah, like moving. Like oh right. Twitching, like twitching I just thought like he was a metalhead, like he oh, rocked no. all the time. <laughs> no, that's like you, you know, twitchy McTwitcherson or fiddly McFiddleson. Uh, Thanks for calling me out like that. <laughs> well, you do fiddle, like, you know, for and since he was a big dude, he wrecked whatever furniture he sat on. Like, how big is he? How big is he? Like, he has to be giant. Yeah. Has to like far well, he's big. called Joe the Giant, so he must be absolutely well, huge. Was he, like, was he like eight foot and weighed was like, he like 40 stone? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so Ken the Furry. Ken the Furry was a fat f that would shave his face, but not his neck. Oh, no. This was before the internet was really a thing, so none of us really knew what a furry was. He always tried playing his fursona, a giant blue dog that pissed acid. Sorry, bro. <laughs> he always rolled his dice by making the jerk off motion and making a face like he's jizzing his dice everywhere. If you ask me, that can be funny. Don't forget, this is the 90s. Yeah. Where that, that type of humour was peak. Yeah, that was a lot funnier back then. Yeah, like, peak. Like, there's a reason Adam Sandler movies were massive in the yeah, 90s. Exactly. So, like, maybe we're judging us from a long perspective. Yeah. He seemed to subsist on Mountain Dew, generic cheese balls, and Taco Bell, and would wipe his greasy mitts and whatever was handy. His spot on the couch had crusty orange streaks on it. <laughs> Ken liked to make magic items in games, mostly involving shoving something up <laughs> asshole. What? He made butt beads of force, which when thrown would lodge themselves up a target's ass and then expand. <laughs> Another creation... <laughs> Another creation was the butt blade which was a sword that could be concealed up your ass and its magic allowed you to draw it instantly. Mate, that's, that's a prison shank. <laughs> that's a prison shank, I've never heard of one. But Ken's most infamous creation was the furry butt beat. Oh, fairy butt Fur beads. I know, I'm Irish, I say like, furry and fairy sounds uh, exactly the yeah. same. It's not what you think. These are not butt beads for fairies. These are living fairies used at as butt beats. Oh, oh god. god, pure little creatures. What is it? Why no. They no. Really small. Think of them. Think of them. We're children. <laughs> he came to the idea because another PC, a giant Amazon woman, never could get laid because she was bigger than everyone we met. He took some fairies he and a third PC had captured to enslave, tied them to a string, and presented them to the giant Amazon woman as a sex toy. Joe, being just as degenerate, accepted them and then role played jamming, wiggling furries up his character's ass. So, this, so, can the furry give Joe the giant <laughs> furry butt beads? That, I have no words to describe. That, uh, I, I. Quite a crossover, though, I must yeah. say. Quite a crossover. Next post. Uh, yeah, next post, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to talk to you about our new affiliate, Reroll. Reroll is a D&D 5th edition character builder app. Now, everyone needs a character sheet app for a tabletop game, but what makes Reroll stand out above all the rest is its character art. I personally find the character art really, really cool. It has this beautiful retro pixel art aesthetic, and they are continually adding new races and items, so you can customise it whatever way you want. They currently have 14 supported races, over 150 weapons, and over 400 pieces of armour you can mix and match from to really make your character come to life. And the best part, you can have your own little cute companion, like a little baby penguin, a flying kitty, a stupid looking pug, or my personal favourite, a little corgi. And the best thing about Reroll, it has a free version with limited character art, so you can try before you buy and see if you like it or not. We personally think it's an amazing app that will just improve your overall enjoyment of tabletop role-playing games. 
Reroll is on Apple Android desktop and if you use our coupon code NECKBEARDIA at checkout you get 10% off. It's a great affiliate that we think you guys will love. But enough of that, let's get back to the video. Teehee macaroni is the bane of my fucking existence. Every fucking campaign that my GM runs, inevitably at some point, involves running into an NPC named Teehee Macaroni, who the GM affectionately describes as an epic level sorcerer who's also a retarded nudist gnome. <laughs> Why is it always gnomes? <laughs> you know, this could be funny, you never know, right. but you know fine, like, it's not, it's going to be just <laughs> horrible. But I think this has got a funny The GM gnomes. thinks it's fucking hilarious yeah, though. Yeah, he thinks it's funny. Tihi Macaroni wanders the countryside with a unique rod of wonders powered by retarded magic shoved up his anus. <laughs> why, do they have to why is up it the always bomb? up why, the bum? Why, why is it up the bum? <laughs> <laughs> and he casts the rod of wonders by diddling his penis. <laughs> oh, he says nothing but his own name and different inflections and the phrase, I like, I like it, the good berry, gimme, gimme the good berry. The GM thinks it's hilarious to have this character show up during the middle of encounters we're struggling at and start jerking <laughs> off magic everywhere. <laughs> okay, maybe once or twice, but I don't know if this is every time. Yeah, but the worst part is his chant. He wanders around chanting his name. So when he's about to show up, the GM will start low. Tee hee hee, macaroni, macaroni, tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> macaroni, macaroni. <laughs> And then get louder and louder until he's f***ing shouting Tee hee hee! Macaroni macaroni! macaroni. <laughs> and the I, table... I, I think this is funny to be honest with you. And the table loves it. The other guys they play with think it's the best yet. Tee hee hee macaroni has been our table's de facto inside joke. Our signature running gag for six years now. When that chant starts up, everyone else joins in like a ritual. <laughs> The whole table is expected to start chanting tee hee hee macaroni macaroni by the end. And every f***ing time I refuse because this is some embarrassing circa 2002 penguin of doom shit. <laughs> it's always the same thing. There goes Anon again. No fun allowed around Anon. Anon's just a big grouch who's getting angry because we're making him touch tee hee hee's macaroni's penis again. <laughs> but why won't you just let us have fun with this character? He's just here for dumb fun. You stick in the mud. These motherfuckers are all over 25 years old. <laughs> tee hee hee macaroni is going to be the death of me. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, me and Megan are both 26. And I think this is pretty funny, to be honest with you. I know, so you maybe, find it so funny. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not all the time. Maybe if we only did it like once every now and again. But this is actually a pretty... I don't... Like, like, let us know what you think. Is this cringe? I think it's kind of fun, to be honest with you. Trying to get my younger brother into 40k. He likes the setting and the models, but is a little sceptical of going to the local game store to play. I really struggle with local game store there. I don't there. know. I, I, it's not the like, thing for us. I we know. Never, we never leave you like that. No, just... We just call it by the name. Are you going to the War Game Centre? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we call it. I assured him all the regulars are cool and it won't be a big deal. I make two armies. Orcs for me and Imperial Guard for him. These aren't par lists or anything. Just a decent variety to get him used to the game. I take him down to the local game store and into one of the side rooms with a table and terrain. We set up and start playing. He's picking up the game quickly. Seems to be enjoying himself and having a good time. People at this local game store are generally friendly and sometimes people will hang out and spectate your game and chat, etc. It's the same as our one. Yeah, it's the same yeah. thing. So does, yeah. Someone opens the door to do just that, but an ungodly stench wafts in as soon as he steps into the room. Yellow teeth, soda-stained lips, greasy matted hair, dandruff all down the front of his shirt, acne, just a straight up nurgle. <laughs> Nurgling. <laughs> The look on my poor brother's face. The creature waddles into the room and looks over the table, unaware of how offensive his presence was. He looks me in the eye and says with a thick lisp, What? My, my space marines oh, could yeah. totally pin your orcs. My space marines could totally pin your orcs. <laughs> we both just stare at him. Thankfully, he gets the message and leaves. <laughs> we finish up our game, but my brother is far less enthusiastic now, just goes through the motions. I take him home and he never mentions 40k to me ever again. The face when... The really uh, weird part is, 
is that I had never seen that guy in the store before. I never saw him again. The damage he did was irreparable, though. That's <laughs> kind of sad, you know, because, like, you know... Putting the fell off 40k. Altogether, because it is a fun game. Now, don't yeah, wrong. especially if he's, like, trying to get his younger brother yeah. into it. If, you know? It, oh. it, it, it all depends on the type of people you play with, though, when it comes to 40k. Because yeah. 40k is a lot more... There's a lot more meta-oriented stuff, but, look, like, you know... Eh, what can you do? Yeah. Be part of a shitty sci-fi forum a few years back. Get into Skype call with people from it. Dude from the site turns up. He plays a weird, rapey, hermaphroditic alien. He gets other characters to impregnate it and then gets its children to murder other characters. Wait, we did a video on this? I'm pretty sure. Oh, it was a, yeah, I'll link to it down below. Yeah. Remember the smeg monster? Yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure this might be the same one. Could it be the same one? one? He is apparently friends with a site admin. I don't like him much for obvious reasons. He starts sending pictures of himself in a dress to everyone in the call. Wants to talk fashion. Okay. <laughs> no idea if he's trans or a cross-dresser, but there's no way in hell I'm going to be sitting around talking dresses with him. I tell him that modern styles are boring and that we would be talking about gambesons and what sort of fleur-de-lis we put on our banners. He gets pissed. Keep talking about my helmet plumes and how I keep my cuirass shined. He goes ballistic, starts cussing me out, leaves the call and block him. Day afterwards, he is banned from the site. Find out that he went ballistic, threatening to kill everyone in the chat, and then spamming a bunch of gore pics. Very mentally unhinged. Very mentally unhinged. Things. It's not the same story we no, it's we definitely. done, but there, we do we did do a story very similar to it. It's very where, similar. Like the like the aliens impregnating. It, 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 go like watch it. The, go, go watch, watch it. it after this video. It's worth checking out if you haven't already. Yeah. People that always feel they need to be the leader. Ain't much of a story, but here it comes. Playing V20. The person in question was a typical nerd chick. Loved Harry Potter, Overwatch, and Black Butler, etc. If a player acted in a way she disapproved of, was violent, said something she thought was wrong, she would bitch at them, whenever her character was in the scene or not. Whenever the courtier would get a call from our sponsor, she would demand to be the one to answer the call, or just roll to snatch the phone out of our hands. The courtier ends up getting a book from the prince that contained the names of all the kindred of the city as a reward for completing a mission. When her boyfriend claims it, she tries to snatch it from him, fails, whines at him for a few minutes, and then just pickpockets it from his character later, says he was not worthy of it, and proceeds to keep the book hidden from the rest of the courtier for the duration of the chronicle. Wasn't a nightmare, but pretty damn annoying. Yeah, I can see why it yeah, would be annoying. Be more annoying than I it's said, more the fact, like, I imagine her being one of those people, she talks to the table, everybody collectively to, sighs and rolls their yeah, eyes. No, everyone has to be silent and listen to everything yes, that I yes. say, because I'd be the most important person in the room, yeah. so you have, have to, to listen, listen to me. Right? Yeah. You know, like we said in the last one, um, the prime, like, you know, one of the core features of any neck beard, or in this case, the egg beard, is that level of self-entitlement. Self-entitlement and narcissism. Yeah, it's most definitely a they common trait in among neckbeards neck beards and, and neck beards, beards. You know, yeah. same thing, just, to, yeah. you know. Have a fairly good group set up from various work acquaintances. DM is an almost comical neckbeard stereotype. Overweight, foul-smelling and poorly groomed. His smell isn't overpowering, but it's fucking weird. Like someone fucked a washed up whale carcass until it exploded. <laughs> then, seen yeah. that explode? It's vile. then gathered up the chunks and started over again. Oh god. However, the spacious apartment we played at, plus people being a bit spineless, meant we just accepted it and hoped everyone else would snap first. While normally this is where I'd make something up about his horrible fetishes or power trips, it's just a bog standard grip in a bog standard campaign. Hardly Shakespeare, but it's serviceable. Problems start arising with the snack etiquette of all things. Motherfucker never brings any. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's a small thing, but it annoys everyone. And due to affirmation spinelessness, it just builds up. Be honest with you, I don't mind if the DM doesn't bring anything. Yeah, because he's actually running the. Yeah, like, you know, if the DM doesn't bring, it, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with yeah, that. Yeah, but it's, it's more, it's just etiquette. People yeah, bring snacks is. to a game. It is. Even if it's just like a bag of crisps or uh, oh. a, like a, a share bar of chocolate right, or something. Let me tell you guys, now, there's this fellow that I used to know, right? 
And uh, yeah, Prime Neckbeard. I'm not going to say his name for obvious reasons. But uh, so we all decide to go to the zoo one day. This would have been years ago. This is like, we're talking 10 years easy now. Um, so like 2011 or so. So we all said, like, right, come on, we're going to go up. Uh, one of my mates just got her, just passed his driving test. So we go up to Belfast, we go to the zoo and say, right, come on, we'll all just bring something to eat for lunch or whatever. Sounds good. And everyone brings like, you know, sandwiches, crisps, whatever. And uh, this fellow locks up with one orange for everyone. <laughs> and the thing is, Megan knows exactly who he is. Oh, yes. Uh, I can't say the name of the person for obvious reasons, but one fucking orange each is not adequate, okay? And it, it was one of those ones we took the piss out of for months over this. But uh, yeah, one orange each. The fuck is wrong with you? The moment we were all waiting for finally came when he managed to polish off half the arrayed food in under 20 minutes by himself. Oh no, no, you don't He do brings shit, nothing you. and eats it all? Okay. <laughs> Guy who owns the apartment finally loses his shit, rants about his hygiene and smell, then demands he replace the snacks or fuck off. DM says he's good for it and waddles off. Then five minutes later comes back. Uh, so I don't actually have that much money? Oh fucking course he doesn't. But I can pay you back next time. Oh for who? Oh fucking! <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> oh fucking course he can. <laughs> no, seriously, I only need about three fit. <laughs> <laughs> Guy who owns the apartment dives up, and the DM waddles off as fast as his multiple claws could carry him. Well, at this point, I noticed our DM was actually an eight-story tall crustacean from the Camryberry. Of course, he took the money and ran. And since nobody wanted the DM, the group fell apart. I really like the idea that he is actually a giant crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Joins the campaign as a barbarian. Spites memes and character. Nah, I feel personally <laughs> attacked, attacked by this, by this one. <laughs> Murder hobos to high hell and barrels through the campaign world like a steamroller. No regard for plot hooks, the story, or even why he is there. Eventually, DM throws literally Satan in front of the party in a non-hostile encounter as sort of a retarded player litmus test. Barbarian insults Lucifer, the Prince of Darkness, to his face, gets hit with the Annihilation Ray and instantly gets disintegrated. Hey, that's not fair. I want another go. Uses his hero points to give himself a do-over. Nearly gets himself disintegrated oh, again see. immediately. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I should really stop playing 5e. It ends up attracting the worst people. Friend from old shitty 3.5 edition campaign. Different long story. Invites me to 5e game. Midgard. Sounds like some good shit. Make a vampire sorcerer. Party consists of orc barbarian. Friend. Human warrior. Forgotten. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. The bear folk bard. Winnie. And the cleric that joins later. Also not important until later. Party starts out in whole post bar fight. Fight some spider people and then some spider swarms. Winnie uses speak with animals to persuade spiders. It fucking works. And Winnie now has a small spider army on his body. What the fuck? No, it should be Winnie the fuck, Dutch yeah, pig. <laughs> Do some questioning. End up a tree. Winnie has a random ass stone and stabs it into the tree. Entire party gets cursed and now covered in branches. NPC comes by after we realise we need to rid ourselves of this curse. Has a bunch of captured werewolves. Winnie rolls a natural 18 with advantage. Wait, DM, why does he have advantage? Oh, Winnie has these cool looking glasses that look like the ones Squirtle had in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Maybe we can get mean magic items like that. Never see another item like it ever again. Find an airship. Fight skelly boys in the ship. One skeleton sits there. Winnie takes a bone from it. Is this a crossover? It sounds like a crossover. Is this a crossover with all skeleton party now? Winnie takes a bone from it. Speaks to it and it responds in riddles. Okay, whatever. Wizard who owns the airship appears and is genuinely funny. Mentions potions that we can't have unless we get a unicorn horn. Winnie effectively derails the campaign for those fucking potions. <laughs> Later, his dog gets killed because friend was being a dick. Friend dies, and immediately werewolf owner NPC appears and gives him pet werewolf with dog's memories. Party goes to arena, and after killing the attractions, the boss comes up to us. Party. I mean, Winnie turns into Disneyland in four rolls. 
we go back in time and find out some people took a part of the tree. Winnie takes the branch, misplacing it for 10,000 years. What? <laughs> After we fight a golem, two party members need greater restoration potions. We finally get a unicorn horn. I hold on to it because they most likely sell well. Winnie wants it. Fuck that, no. I want to use my forked tongue. Roll a wisdom save. I feel. You feel as if he's right. You should give him the horn. Give it to him. My character cannot tell that he is actually being magically compelled. It only makes sense that I do this action that I wouldn't normally do, so I'm not able to retaliate. GM gloats about how Winnie's player always tries to exercise control over the players. Planning vengeance right now. <laughs> yeah. Winnie takes the unicorn horn to get the potions. Turns out he can't open it. Wizard lied to him. Fuck yeah. We go to Disneyland. We wait near the world tree. The one Winnie stole the branch from. To restore the branch so I can get uncursed. Friend's new character was not cursed. Winnie demands info on where the gold earnings for Disneyland are. And when manager doesn't tell him, the bear folk straight breaks his neck. <laughs> Mind you, he is neutral good. Ends up stuck in pit. Friend and I find him. He won't give up the branch for some odd reason. Fuck this. We kill him. DM states we are now evil for killing such a good character. What? Cleric casts Inanimate Undead. I'm so glad you did that, says the DM in an elated tone. Wait, why? When he comes back as a demigod, hits me with a min-max fifth spell, and one-shots me. DM quite literally says, get fucked. <laughs> oh my god. Friend gets choke slammed, and we have to roll up new characters. When he comes back with more health, undead bonuses, and necromancy spells. I should have left sooner, but I want to see the shit show through and make sure that these idiots stay in 5th edition. <laughs> honestly, that's just, yeah, you're right, be honest with you. Sometimes, you do you want to just see what, how, how, how it goes out, yeah. Like, you know. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one, even if it was a train wreck. Um, I quite enjoyed this thread. Yeah. I think we'll probably do more. Now, if you have any of your own stories, uh, definitely let us know down below, and we'll definitely make a video on it, because we got quite a few from the last video, yeah, but so not enough. Make, but yeah. if we get more, you know, we'll definitely we can do make it. a video edit. Yeah, I think it'll be worth doing. I do want to continue with this thread, because it is a particularly good one. Um, I do like the, the idea that that guy was actually a crab. By the yes. end, <laughs> pure shit post. It was a shit post, but you know, like it was still funny. It was worth pitting in, so you know how it is. But like, as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all of the good shit. Check um, all the links. Check all the links. Is there anything else we need to talk about before we go? No. No, I don't think so. Well, anyway, look, as always, guys, hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>